What's going on, people? Mike C Town here with the Dead and Hip Hop solo album review, and today I'm talking about the newest album from Clipping entitled "There Existed an Addiction to Blood." For those of you that don't know, Clipping is an experimental hip hop group consisting of instrumentalists William Hudson and Jonathan Snipes, as well as poet slash rapper David Diggs. And I had a weird beginning with Clipping. Uh, I didn't love Mid City when it first came out, and I also didn't love their debut album when it first came out. It wasn't until 2016 Splendor and Misery that I kind of got on board with Clipping. And of course, I went back after that and I developed a much larger appreciation for those earlier albums. But it was Splendor and Misery that really made Clipping exciting to me. So three years later, we get this new album, There Existed an Addiction to Blood, and I was really excited to hear it, especially after Hudson and Snipes have both been doing some amazing soundtrack work, and David has been building his, his acting resume. I was, I was curious to see where they were at musically. And the way this album starts off is super creepy. It's like David Diggs is rapping through a CB radio or something. You hear these weird noises in the background, this white noise, these footsteps, you know, what sounds like a shovel, maybe digging a grave, uh, while David is rapping about the world kind of going crazy and falling apart. You know, it's this really cool way to start this. You know, it definitely gives a cool horror movie feel, which is a feeling that kind of permeates the whole album. The way it rolls into the piano tapping on Nothing Is Safe is really, really well done. And the way the beat builds on this song is super dope. It goes from the piano tapping to including the, the, the synth sounds to later on the song explodes into these different sounds that are all so well layered. It's very John Carpenter to me, you know, the drums, the wall of noise, it all serves as a perfect backdrop for David's rapping here. The next standout song was easily La Mala Ordina, which features the Rita assisting with production. And the Rita's a noise artist from Canada, and it was really cool seeing them involved in something with clipping. The song also features Benny the Butcher and El Camino on the mic, so this song was really exciting for me to check out when I first saw the track list. The beat is really dope with these nice hard drums with these buzzing sounds swelling and throbbing over them. Um, it's later that the noise wall comes in, which I assume is the Rita's contribution. David starts it off crazy with the bags on the table ain't for weight, they for body parts. Victim skin stretched across the wall, call it body art. And his verse gets even better as he seems to be making this comparison between crack dealing gangsters with mafioso gangsters. Crack is what a skull do, so if someone getting brain, that means it was nice to know you. El Camino's verse was nice, he sounded great over the beat. Um, he didn't really say a whole lot that sucked me in, but I feel like his verse served its purpose. And I kind of felt the same way about Benny's verse. He sounded really nice over the beat, but not a lot word-wise jumped out at me. But this line was really dope though. Rolex dial studded, fed same off time flooded. Put another chain on my neck and I'ma drown from it. And at first I didn't really get the purpose of their verses, but after listening to it a bit, David is telling a story about what seems to be two big gangsters kind of encountering some real mafioso gangsters. So Benny and El Camino are speaking from a first person stance as two guys who think they're hard until David steps in to talk about them getting murdered by gangsters much harder than them. I really liked Run For Your Life. Uh, I liked how the first part of the beat makes you feel like you're outside at nighttime without even explicitly saying that. You know, the sounds and the ambient background noise they use here is just so subtly perfect. Even what sounds like cars driving by, it's so well done. And I love how the beat progresses as the song moves along, which seems to come from the sounds of a car's radio that's driving by, man. And when the beat gets more detailed, it still keeps this super dark and menacing feel. And the verse from the chat who I feel like you guys would probably know from 3-6 Mafia songs, but uh, her verse was great, man. She's talking about chopping you up, feeding you to her pigs, you know, making a tasty luncheon out of your kids, Hannibal lecturing your face. All right, yeah, it's a lot of fun. 
The Show is another standout track. It's a song about a red room, which is rumored to be uh, a room where you get to kind of observe someone being tortured to death and uh, users get to pay money to see certain torture techniques happen. And uh, the way David Diggs describes this is so vivid. And yeah, the hook is just great. Just look, it's okay to cry. You live your best life when you watch them die. And this beat might be my favorite beat on the whole album. I feel like the thump is there, but it's also mixed in with these industrial fuzzed out sounds. It's hard to describe, but I really like the way they compose this one. Now, Blood on the Fang, this is probably my favorite song on the album. Uh, everything from the beat to the verses just works so well. And the way it comes in with the sample from Ganja and Hess with uh, Sam Wayman singing, there existed an addiction to blood. I can't do it. Um, the way they mix that in throughout the song is really, really well done. And here David is discussing the violent history of racism and he's doing it in such an interesting way as it's a discussion of the past as well as a sort of call to arms for people today. And uh, this line right here was particularly interesting to me. Skin do show you who kin, that's it though. What's inside never been too simple. Syrup he sip, cause he can't taste his own blood. It's almost like he's talking about how black folks recognize a connection to each other only by skin, but not by blood. Meaning our connection to each other can appear only skin deep and almost superficial when we should really be recognizing that we have a connection that goes much deeper than that. Syrup he sip because he can't taste his own blood. He can't recognize the connection we have to each other is much deeper than having the same skin tone. Um, I'm probably totally wrong here, but I think it's interesting to think about. Story 7 is worth talking about just because I think it's crazy how they connect it to Story off Mid-City and then Story 4 off of the, uh, the Alt-J Remix album. And uh, Story 7 is a song about a werewolf who meets people from the aforementioned stories and I just love the way they did this man. And the way David Diggs finds his pocket in this super off-kilter beat is just nothing short of amazing to me. So we still don't have a story three or a story six, right? I really wish I could figure out the deal with that. I feel compelled to talk about attunement based on the last verse of the song. The whole song is fantastic, but that last verse is fucking incredible. The banging and the throbbing industrial beats with these spooky sounds in the background, it's just great. And for some reason, that third verse just floors me. Overall, like Splendor and Misery, this particular album really sucked me in and never let up. I love the take on creating a horror movie atmosphere within hip hop without pumping out a tired horrorcore album. You know, whether or not you can put this album into that subgenre doesn't really matter because no matter what you do with it, this album is easily going to stand out. The fact that on the first listen or two, the backdrops may appear as sparse and minimal, but then once it clicks, you're realizing just how complex and detailed these backdrops are. And you know, every moment is placed with purpose. It has so many cool moments that call me back to classic horror movie soundtracks like the work that John Carpenter did as I stated earlier, but it also gives me vibes from some of the quieter moments of what Fabio Frizi did on the zombie soundtrack. Uh, many times I get vibes from what Tangerine Dream did with the Near Dark soundtrack and then you throw in some nice elements of throbbing grizzle and you let a band like Ramla remix it and you have a truly unique backdrop for a rap album. And the fact that you have a rapper as talented as David Diggs who's able to find a pocket on these beats with little to no drums and still make the listener kind of bob their head to a rhythm that's not really there. It's incredible, man. Um, obviously, I'm covering this late, but I do think it's dope that they dropped this around Halloween. It's a perfect idea for an album like this. But, um, but yeah, I feel like Clipping is on a killing spree with these albums. Um, as musicians, they simply cannot be stopped right now and they're making easily some of the most exciting music in today's rap, noise, and ambient soundscapes. So, I fucking love this album. It's easily a top five album of the year. So um, let me know what you guys think. Drop some comments in the comment section down there. Let's talk about it. 
And for all my patrons that are wondering about my next Out of My Element video, yes, I'm still doing it. Um, I will explain what the delay is with that in the video that's coming out very soon, so stay tuned for that. But as usual, thank you for living, thank you for loving, thank you for being you, and I'll see you guys next time. All right? Peace out, boy.